Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Bowering, naturopathic doctor, and today I'm sharing nine tips for how to overcome adrenal fatigue and chronic stress. So I know that this is top of mind for so many people wanting to feel better, wanting to get your vital energy back, and these are my best tips. So tip number one is to fix something called your leptin resistance. So I have an entire show all about leptin resistance, and some really easy tips that you can implement to fix your leptin include seeing that morning sunshine so as the sun is coming up on the horizon taking a look at that without sunglasses and you know without being behind glass really important to see that early morning sun this wakes up your brain and your brain is connected to your adrenal function there's all these feedback loops that happen there so it's important that you see that morning sun as well as decreasing your artificial light exposure especially at nighttime when it's dark after the sun has gone down you don't want to be looking at artificial light so firelight is okay and candlelight is okay but artificial lights really do have a negative impact on the way that your hormones are secreted including your adrenal glands as well as cold therapy now this is something that whether it's cold showers that you want to implement or using ice packs on your body this is really helpful for fixing that leptin resistance as well and also another tip is to stop eating at least three hours before bedtime you want to go to bed on as empty a stomach as possible to really help with your leptin signaling. Okay, tip number two for overcoming adrenal fatigue is to decrease your EMF exposure. And this means your non-native EMF, so electromagnetic radiation, whether that's from 5G, so from cell phone towers, from your Wi-Fi router, from your cell phones, from you know any type of electronic device in your home, your laptops, your computers, your TV screens. Make sure that you're not charging your cell phone next to your butt bed, and this is really important to decrease that EMF exposure. Exposure. If you can shut down your Wi-Fi when you're sleeping, that would be a great tip and to really decrease that exposure. Tip number three is to make some dietary changes and definitely you want to support your body in a healthy way. We know that sh too many sugars and carbohydrates are a really taxing to our body, our digestive tract and to our hormonal system. So decreasing those is important. Also limiting too much coffee and caffeine in your diet, but the time timing of your coffee actually makes a difference for your adrenals as well. So if you want to maximize the benefits of your coffee and your caffeine, don't have it first thing in the morning when your cortisol is already high. So between 7 and 8 a.m. is naturally when our cortisol levels will spike. You want to prolong and actually shift having your coffee, your morning coffee, a little bit later. So I like to take mine around usually between 10 and 11 a.m. I find that that really helps with my productivity and my brain function and I'm I'm not going to overtax my adrenals by having that caffeine too early in the morning. Another tip in terms of dietary changes is to make sure that you're getting enough DHA. So seafood is really important. Small fatty fish are great. Mackerel is a great example to ensure that you're getting that important omega-3 fatty acid. Oysters are also a great source as well as iodine magnesium. So these are all packed into an oyster which is fantastic but again whatever you can do to up your natural intake of these important nutrients is really important for your circadian rhythms but also for the way that your cells function and also for your adrenal glands also ensuring that you have enough vitamin b12 is important so sometimes this is really challenging for those of you that are vegetarian or if you have compromised digestion so sometimes a b12 supplement in a whole food form is a great way to get some absorbable b12 in a form that is again not the cyanocobalamin so I have a bunch of posts on what type of b12 not to take so that's really important as well and also decrease the inflammatory fats in your diet so whether that's the corn oil the vegetable oil the sunflower the safflower the trans fats and margarines and things you definitely want to decrease those in the diet because they are very inflammatory and will make this whole cortisol problem worse in terms of your adrenal fatigue Tip number four for overcoming adrenal fatigue is to detoxify. So you want to at least a few times a year really do a targeted detoxification program on for all of your internal organs. So focusing in on heavy metal detox. One of the favorite things that I use for this besides the herbal medicines to help to detoxify the liver, the kidneys, the lungs, the skin, the digestive tract is also chlorella. And chlorella is a blue-green algae 
and this is really good at trapping those heavy metal toxins, things like mercury, aluminum, and some of those other things that we're exposed to in our environment in the pollution that surrounds us. Tip number five is exercise. Yes, so doing some exercise is very important for the adrenals, yet you don't want to overdo it. So if you're exhausting yourself with prolonged and too rigorous of exercise, this can actually work against you in terms of adrenal fatigue. But incorporating some type of HIIT training and actually a little bit of sprinting is great in your, you know, <laughs> sport of choice because it helps to increase something called BDNF. And this is important in terms of brain function. And we know that that brain and adrenal connection is very important. Also a great form of exercise is having sex. So yes, this is a great way and it's known to increase your oxytocin levels and oxytocin helps to naturally decrease our stress hormone, that cortisol. So that's really important as well. Tip number six is to utilize some herbal medicines and herbal medicines have been known to not only help with stress and alleviating that stress response, but also to help with sleep, but also to help with leptin. So one of my favorite herbs is mango seed and this is Irvingia gabonensis and it's uh, also known as Ogbono um, in traditional African cuisine. And this is something that it can be taken as, as a herbal medicine and one study actually showed that it does help with the mediation of a decrease in the expression of PPAR and leptin. So this is important when we talk about leptin resistance and its connection to how the adrenals are doing. So that's something that you can check out and we all have links below in the description for a great you know, way of getting in that mango seed. Helping to balance blood glucose levels is really important as well. So some of my other favorite herbal medicines are called anxiolytics. So valerian is one of them, and this is fantastic for relaxing in terms of the nervous system. Skullcap is another, as well as passion flower, and which is a beautiful flower, which we can see here, as well as lemon balm. And these are all helping to decrease and taking off what I call that hot wiring in the nervous system and that overreaction to sometimes to stress, but also just sort of calming down the nervous system in a natural way without any of those negative side effects, which are are often associated with other conventional ways of treating stress and anxiety in terms of pharmaceutical interventions. Tip number seven is to get your circadian sleep cycle in sync. So that is part of what I discuss when I talk about circadian rhythms, but also the leptin resistance, going to bed at an appropriate time every night, waking up with the sun. Ideally, our body is supposed to do that. And the better that your circadian rhythms get into sync, with the earth and with the geomagnetism of the earth and the sun and the light cycles, you'll notice that you can actually wake up without an alarm clock. And that's a great indication that you're in sync with the earth and you're getting that restful night's sleep. Tip number eight is to lay out your clothes for the day. And there are a lot of experts will agree that, you know, the way that you start your day will often translate into the way that the rest of your day will play out. And by having a win first thing in the morning, by not having to stress about what you're wearing because you've already set it up the night before in terms of your outfit for the day, this is really goes a long way to feel good, to get motivated and to have a really, you know, great day starting your day off on the right foot. And tip number nine is to incorporate some form of meditation into your daily routine. And we know that through the breath, through calming the mind and through meditation, it doesn't have to be long, but this really goes a long way at helping with the vagus nerve in terms of our autonomic nervous system. It really does help to calm down our nervous system and calm down our brain and allow for those feedback loops to give the right information to our brain that we're not always in a panic mode state of fear. We have to counteract that as much and as stressful as our days may be, we have to counteract that and meditation is one of my absolute favorite ways to be able to do this. So I hope you have some questions and comments. I hope that you learned something new today. Be, please be sure to share this video and give me a big thumbs up. I appreciate all of your support. Also remember to subscribe and turn on those notifications by clicking that bell and click all notifications so you get, always get my newest and latest uploads which is happening every single day. And remember to always take good care of your health and to do it naturally. Thanks for watching today. Thank you.